What is going on everybody? Welcome back to yet another episode of the European Adventure. We are still here in lovely Finland. I'm standing on an adorable little bridge here overlooking a beautiful creek. Kind of want to jump in. Very nice. But we're still here in Finland yesterday. I did not bring the camera out because we went to a sauna that was at a restaurant on a river. And something about bringing a camera into a public sauna just did not seem like a very good idea. But the whole gang was there. We had a couple of brewskis, went into the sauna, jumped into the freezing cold water. It felt absolutely incredible and was a very nice relaxing day after that big barbecue dinner we cooked the other night. But today is now Sunday and it's time for the barbecue class. So we're back here at Miller's. This is just what their backyard looks like. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I think we have about 15 people showing up. And between myself, Leroy and Lewis and Fiji's Barbecue, we're gonna teach all these Finnish people a little bit about all we know in the world of barbecue. So let's go see what they're up to. Hey. Hi. Look at all this beautiful meat. These ducks, they look so good. <laughs> I wanna eat them. Check these out, these are some spare ribs that have the belly on, or at least some extra meat from the belly. Looking nice and thick. Got some regular ribs, yeah. those look familiar. Beautiful chickens. Got the meats, all of it. How's it going, buddy? Good, how are you? Good, you ready to do a class? Ready for the class, ready for New School Barbecue University International Ooh. One in Finland. I like the sound of that. Do you feel nervous at all? No. Me neither. <laughs> I, I think some... everybody else is pretty nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I was just talking to Patrick about it. <laughs> yeah, we've done uh, so many of these that, you know, can't really stump us at this point. We also teach barbecue multiple times every week. That's true. On video. How you feeling? Um, not quite as confident as him, but like I told him, if he's confident, I'm confident. Yeah. It's just kind of don't know what we're walking into. Are you ready to teach all of your knowledge to the Finnish people? All of it. In Finnish. Nice job on the setup. Very prepared. And then those are attached to the loin. They're usually a little bit leaner. They're a little bit more difficult to carve. But I really like cooking St. Louis ribs. Beautiful. Up just a little bit higher. Beautiful. So we have one of these under a hood vent there. And um, it's all fire, all wood, uh, no gas. Uh, the electric components to it operate the dampers and the flue and all that stuff. So you put the fire in here. Yeah. And you guys might see pictures of... I was cooking on offsets over there. People like to put wood right at the end of the brisket between the brisket and that firebox. And that's to protect the brisket or whatever meat. Yeah, that's also where a water pan would come in. Yeah. It's less of like a add moisture to the cooking chamber and more of like a heat sink to kind of like protect that and use it as a barrier from that direct radiant heat. I mean, there will be like a ball spot. You want air and smoke to get every, but you also want to use your space efficiently and make sure that you use, that you can get as much meat on there as possible. As far as the legs go, I'm not gonna tell you guys anything about confit because there are French people in the room. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody. So. We've broken down a duck or a chicken. We can do a turkey as well. Really not that hard. I'm gonna demo this spatchcock here. I like to put the wings back like that. Um, that way it's kind of, it's like this. Right. Yeah, on the beach. <laughs> Spashcock in the turkey. Stand it up on either side. Going down either side of the backbone. Just make a little incision kind of in that breastbone. And then it'll sit nice and flat. And then it's a little bit more flat. And then it's a little bit easier to cook that way. Just dig your finger down in there to find that natural separation. And as soon as I kind of feel where that is, going to come in with a knife and just kind of cut down to it and then try to reveal it. It's a smoked duck breast. It's been seared. Oh. I like duck. I, I did it all myself. <laughs> and go directly down and then kind of out. Like one, one and a half centimeter above the meat. <laughs> How'd the poultry come out? Good, everything looks pretty good. Halfway through the class, Bones is being very responsible today. On accident. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna unwrap these briskets that are fully cooked. How's the fire? Yep, there's fire. Ooh. Oh, are looking great. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna wrap them. Oh, okay. I don't normally wrap them, but they're kind of thin and kind of taking a while, so. Yeah. These ribs look very, very good. The idea is gonna be to really not press down at all and just let the weight of the knife do the cutting and take long, full strokes. We want to use the length of the blade. It's juicing out all over the place. It Do is not ever, 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 ever press that brisket down to push the juices out for videos. Do not. Every single pit master will make fun of you for it. Yeah. 
it's if it's cooked correctly, you don't need to. Yeah. We see people do that in videos, and you're just pushing all the juice out. Yeah. Brad, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this, if you can hold up the brisket without it falling apart, right? It's not overcooked, but it still comes apart easily, so it's not undercooked. That's just a good quick test. You could also just eat it. <laughs> it's like cutting a bunch of briskets for whatever reason. This is how we'll do them instead of cutting it in half first. That's a, one more benefit of the foil boat, I was going to say, is that we, you can shrink it back down. So if we cut it in half, and we cut the burn end off, and we cut a slice or two off of here, we can take this cut side and stick it against there so the cut sides are together, and then shrink the boat back around it so it's not going to oxidize. It's a little bit harder with this. I can pick it up and see how it bends, but you can't get, you'd have to unwrap it to get that meat in between the bones. And we cook ours fast enough where it won't dry out unwrapped. I'm really glad I cut that properly on camera. Oh, I wasn't recording. <laughs> Class is over. How are you feeling? Great. I graduated. No. Um, <laughs> all of the students matriculated. No. Um, class was great. Great vibe. Great people. Great questions. It really helped that the briskets that we cut into were incredible. Yeah, they look good. Ribs cooked went well. I also, yeah. he, he learned a lot from me today. I did. I, I really did. I saw you taking notes. Well, we're, yeah, we're definitely going to do uh, the yield test per person. That's coming. Mm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All the hard work is over. I, I feel great. Very impressed by you guys. I feel very grateful. He's gonna choke up. Oh, what? <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a lot of fun. And that is it for the barbecue class in Finland. I gotta say, it feels good. This was uh, almost the last responsibility that we have here. And it went well, everyone seemed happy. Big shout out to all the people at Miller's. These guys are doing a great job. Their food is amazing. If you're ever in Hemmenlin, I highly recommend checking them out. Also, big shout out to everyone from the class who came out. That was a lot of fun, a lot of great people. Everyone's so nice here. But the Finland trip is almost over. Tomorrow, we're heading to Helsinki. So I'll see you there. Which means we're gonna eat a lot more food and maybe even have a couple of beers. Made it to Helsinki. This is hotel room number seven of this European adventure so far, and I gotta say, it's pretty nice. Just cut the train down, not too far from where we were staying, but I'm here with Bones and the Fijuses, so it's time to go meet up with them and uh, see what this town has to offer. But we're only here for the day, because tomorrow we're flying to Copenhagen. But let's go meet up with the guys. Does that make you excited? It does make me very excited. Are these dates? Fish. Fish. Gotta try those fish. Oh yeah. Please. A little reindeer sausage. Don't yeah. mind if I do. Ever since that Somebody Feed Phil episode, I've been dying to try these little fried fish skis with, uh, what is that, garlic mayonnaise? It's garlic sauce. Ooh. So are these, you gotta try one. I'm not gonna try it. <laughs> <laughs> Sat in the wrong place, but I already got this bad boy. Dude, that is really good. Mm, not fishy at all. Dip the head. <laughs> in the white sauce. Oh wow. That's really good. Mm. It's like really, it's like perfect salt. Yeah, it's very mild as far as little fishies go. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's a reindeer hot dog. It's pretty good. It's a little smoky. It does not look like reindeer. It looks like um, hot dogs. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pork hot dog. Yeah. And Got a little smoky in this pork. Tastes yeah. like a hot dog. Yeah. Nice. Meat pie. What do you think is in it? Meat and rice, she said. You want the... Yeah, dude, just drizzle it up, dog. Oh, yeah. You've done this before. <laughs> little finished meat pie. Let's see. Probably full of reindeer. That's really good. Like really? those condiments. Mm. That's a hell of a bite, Arnold. There's just condiments right here, so I wanted to get some meat. <laughs> there you go. You gotta go deep. I like how soft it is. Very nice. Um, that was good. Yeah, that's really good. It's like a meat-filled donut. Yeah. With mayonnaise on it. It's like sweet because of the condiments, but rich. It looks like a like a booty and kolache. Yeah. But <laughs> it's amazing.
Why is that dough so soft? I wouldn't have guessed there was rice in there. Yeah. But it definitely adds to the yeah. overall meat. So the condiments like, um, was a good move, too. Udan? Yeah. It ties it together. What kind of a bite was that? <laughs> All condiments. <laughs> Have to learn how to make these. Yeah, it's got it's got that donuty vibe to it. It's um. Mm. So what it is? is yeah. Donut bread. Mm. Donut bread. All right. Guys, you gotta mm. try this. It's not a bite. How does it taste? <laughs> Graceful as can be. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> I would have warned you, but then I decided not to. Funny. <laughs> Whoa. You guys scared of heights? Just scared no. the sudden stop. <laughs> yeah. Followed by the sudden drop. <laughs> We're on a Ferris stop. wheel, by the way. I'm not sure if it, they could tell. <laughs> <laughs> not the best day for it. A bit gloomy. I can see my hotel from here. Look, is that a Whataburger? <laughs> <laughs> I feel so fancy. How's your wiener? This wiener looks good. <laughs> this is called a wiener in Finland. Maybe, maybe, maybe wiener? No, or it's, it's wiener. <laughs> and I find that amusing. <laughs> Okay, but yeah. And look who joined us! <laughs> Hi, Lindsay. Eh. Ah. Not too shabby. This is good. Evan, are you gonna take a picture? Oh, okay. Is it time for some din din? Ketos. Chitos. Dinner time. Where are we at, dog? We're at Fiskin Pa Diskin. Don't know what that means. But it's in a mall. It's on the fifth floor of a mall. There's kind of this food courty vibe going on, but in a really good way. Um, food looks amazing. Seafood restaurant. We passed on the oysters for five dollars a piece. But cured rainbow trout. What is this one? That's the white fish. White fish with and nettles. Scoggin. Now you're gonna recreate that scoggin, right? Scoggin's coming. What is a scoggin? It's like shrimp or crawfish it's tossed crazy. in like mayo with dill on rye toast. So we're gonna smoke it. We're gonna make some really good seeded rye. Keep this. <laughs> so did you get him saying keep this? <laughs> 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 little salmon soup. I didn't expect it to be green. It's so pretty. Looks great. What is it? Nettle risotto. Ooh, what do we got here? The roasted arctic char. That's all I know. <laughs> now you can stop complaining that you haven't had salmon soup. <laughs> <laughs> He's been talking about it all day. Oh. It looks good. I was expecting it to be a little thicker, more like a chowder. But oh no. Lifetime reaction. Mmm, <laughs> really good. Just had a lovely dinner, and now it's time for the sauna. It's very hot and foggy in here. Sauna life, sauna culture. Sauna. <laughs> Bones, you alive on the end there, bud? Yeah. Throw a little right. steam on there for me. Crank it up, Reggie. <laughs> I want to burn. <laughs> yeah, this is Can't nice. See it. Is that your first sauna experience? First sauna to freezing cold experience. <laughs> we're, we're jumping into cold shower to uh, make up for the fact that there's not a lake nearby. All right, y'all, we're back at the chud shop now because, to be completely honest with you, I forgot to record an outro to this finished vlog video. But, uh, big shout out to everyone in Finland. Bones, how you feeling? I'm finally rested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but big shout out to everyone at Miller's Barbecue in Finland. If you're ever in the area, I highly recommend checking them out. Also, Finnish people, good food. Remember that meat pie? We have to make that, that was so good. And those little lake fish, very good stuff. But all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you haven't caught up with the rest of my European adventures, there's several other videos and there's several more to come. But all that being said, I'll catch y'all in the next one. And until then, please go cook something outside. Peace!